Spy is easily, without question, the worst class in Man vs. Machine. But you already knew that, didn't you? He's such an unpopular pick that it's easy to forget he's in the game to begin with. It's not uncommon to queue dozens of missions in a row without a single team member locking him in. In fact, question, has anyone actually met an MBM spy main? They'll crawl out of the woodwork if you dare question their copium intake, but in my 2000 hours of MVM experience, I don't think I've ever encountered one in-game. Guess they've all been running the cloak and dagger full time. The real question though is why? Why does every other class in Man vs. Machine see regular use across a wide selection of missions, except for one? What makes Spy in particular such an undesirable class? Not just for new players, but for veterans as well. Play the class for more than five minutes and you'll likely figure it out. But if you aren't blessed with the luxury of high tour privilege, good chance you won't be getting that opportunity. And hey, if you want to walk the vote kick tightrope, that's your call. But those stink lines, they were drawn for a reason. Sure, Spy may not have the ability to coat the walls in metal, but you do with Displate, the sponsor of today's video. Displate sells thousands of different posters with themes spanning a massive array of media, from games to music to anime to memes. What makes them unique is that all of their posters are made out of metal, and I can attest the quality is extremely high. You'd think they might be a bitch to mount, but they're really not. The sticker goes on the wall, the magnet goes on the sticker, and the poster goes on the magnet. It's that easy. I personally got these avatar ones, which I think look really sick, and this Giga Chad sign, which was meant for a home gym, but I got lazy, so now he just watches me take a shit. The TF2 ones look really clean as well, so they got you covered there. If you want to personalize your room, I'd highly recommend Displate. And if you use code WheezyTF2 at checkout, you'll get 32% off if you buy one or two posters, and 38% off if you buy three or more. The deal is on for the next couple of weeks, and even I'm gonna take advantage of it. So be sure to use my link in the description below and start browsing today. So, before we delve into why Spy is such an inadequate class, we need to lay out the blueprints that define what it means to be adequate. Arguably the most important factor in dissecting a class's viability is the interplay between risk and reward. It's a gargantuan spectrum that encompasses every aspect of a class's toolkit. Upgrades, loadouts, map positionings, team synergy, the goal is always to aim for the top left quadrant. Minimal risk, yet sky high reward. While you may be able to point to individual aspects of a class's kit that meet this criteria, holistically, excluding Sniper with his big rock camouflage, no class in the game is given a surplus amount of power compared to the other classes without an added layer of responsibility to coincide with it. There are skewed ratios, no doubt. Some crosses are heavier to bear than others. But by and large, the meta staples that adopt a greater risk will and should be met with greater reward. Probably the most ubiquitous implementation of this concept is done through range, as man vs. machine tends to run on the principle of closer equal better. Scout wants to get in close for maximum damage ramp up, to divert aggro away from his teammates, and have easier access to Fano war markings. Soldier wants to get in close for damage ramp up, but also to alleviate the beggar's sporadic firing direction. Pyro needs to constantly fight within neck breathing distance to be even remotely viable. Heavy needs to be up close for max ramp up and body blocking. This dynamic even applies to things like the engineer's building placements or the medic shield bashing. But all of this cannon isn't without the glass. You constantly need to be keeping track of aggro, you have much less time to react to oncoming fire, on the fly retreats are rarely successful, and the leeway you're given if an uber medic is popped too hastily dries up pretty fast. But if we look into both the mechanics and the circumstances that revolve around each class, you'll notice each one has strong options to mitigate those pitfalls. Scout can quadruple his health with money overheal and has the best mobility in the game. Soldier's conch is never not online, so those speed buffs in tandem with health on hit make him nigh unkillable. Pyro has the gas passer, which allows him to disengage whenever he pleases. And he's the most crit-happy merc of them all, so the health on kill is always 
always rolling in. Heavy is the largest beneficiary of Mad Milk and Medi Beams, and he reaches his maximum damage threshold faster than anyone, which means more health on kill, but also more resistances. Even then, all of this is ignoring that you can just move. None of these classes are required by law to be the ass end of a robot centipede. You will lose out on some damage, but barring Pyro without his gas can loaded, every class will always maintain their ability to fulfill their role. Every class, except one. Spy is the only class in Man vs. Machine that is entirely reliant on close-range combat, throwing every player who picks him into the most dangerous, high-risk, Travis Scott mosh pit positioning you could possibly find yourself in. The fate of Spy as a polarizing, radioactive class for new players was sealed the moment that this decision was made. And if you thought Valve would take any steps to make him more forgiving, well, you thought wrong. An undisguised spy going in for a scoliosis checkup draws the most amount of aggro of any DPS class in the game. The moment you swing your knife, backstab or no, every robot will lock their aggro onto you and only you. On top of that, not only does Spy have the lowest base health, he also has one of the most credit intensive upgrade routes in the game. It costs 2400 credits to max out your knife's damage, and that's ignoring the movement speed that's required to chain multiple stabs together. You can't buy any kind of resistance upgrades without it eating into your DPS until the mission is halfway over. Spy is the absolute last class that needed to shoulder this kind of burden. Now, I'm not claiming that Spy doesn't have an effective toolkit to minimize his frailty. He undeniably does. But when trapped at the bottom of a well, you'll need more than a stepladder to climb yourself out. The Sapper in particular is a case where the idea was clearly better than the implementation. When applied to a small robot, the Sapper will stun them in place for a couple of seconds. When applied to a giant, it'll neuter their walk speed by 85%. This doesn't seem too bad until you learn that each level of the upgrade costs 350 credits, and the second and third ticks barely move the needle at all. It was clearly meant to occasionally shore up the risk factor in going in for a stab and open him up to the role of a medic killer, but realistically, your teammates will usually get more out of it than you will. The Dead Ringer, on the other hand, is a fantastic utility, giving him an on demand getaway tool that he desperately needs. I don't know what percentage of potential deaths have been avoided by a simple right click, but it's gotta be over 50. The only penalty to using it is that the robots are buffed with x-ray vision. You have to physically move out of their sight lines in order to drop aggro, but with a 3 second speed boost and a 65% damage reduction, getting back into position isn't a Herculean effort. The knives are the real nuclei of his kit. The big earner and conniver's kunai are instrumental in avoiding those 15 second dirt naps. But they do come with unfortunate trade-offs. The big earner's boost on kill mechanic is great for elongated chain stabs, easier circle strafing, and retreating without the use of a dead ringer, though getting cloak back for each kill will let you pump them out like crazy. However, this ensured safety is really only valuable after the first couple of stabs. Speed doesn't help a player circling the drain, so you'll need to be far more proactive in choosing when to bargain for more kills. The kunai doesn't have this problem to the same degree. The massive health increase per kill lets you play more aggressively, and lets you tank more damage if you're inclined to bullet surf away from their sight lines. While it's undoubtedly the best at dealing with tiny robots that drop off in crowds, the lack of expedited cloak regen presents an unfortunate dilemma. You either have to wait until your dead ringer back online before you run back in, extending your already lengthy downtime even more, or you rush in without that safety blanket and pray you don't become a skid mark. To be honest, I really wish each of these properties weren't segregated based on weapon choice. If health on kill applied overheal or a speed on kill upgrade was introduced, Spy would be much more beginner friendly. As they exist right now though, they do a serviceable job. Enough to where debates surrounding his viability are still raging a decade later. And while I believe Valve did an okay job at making Spy at the very least playable, he doesn't exist in a vacuum. If you're playing Spy, you're not playing 
any of the eight other classes. And given his height and risk factor, he better have the biggest baguette at the table. Well, let's start off by talking about his crowd control, which is the shittiest in the game. In fact, he's the worst by a significant margin, to the point where I'm kind of shocked he remained in this state indefinitely. Seems like a pity patch would be in the cards for him. As you've no doubt noticed from the footage already, Spy can't get more than a few stabs in without needing to fall back and redisguise. An extraordinarily high layer of downtime that no other DPS class has to endure. It might even be the case that Medic will have more uptime with his shield than Spy will with his knife. And again, he still faces the ever-looming probability of getting one-tapped out of nowhere. This is because Armor Penetration is Spy's lifeblood upgrade. He's required to specialize into it to even have a chance of skirting by. But for the small bot drudge you'll be fighting the majority of the wave, Armor Pen is 1600 credits of nothing. You'll one-shot every small robot regardless of if you have it maxed out or not. So for this very prominent dimension of the game, you're entirely reliant on the passive benefits from your knives to do the heavy lifting. There's no consolation prize to be had. Spy, here more than ever, can't compete with the other 8 classes. Actually, ignore that, because the discrepancy in tank busting is probably even worse. We don't even need an RVR analysis on this one. Tanks are a DPS check and nothing else. While classes like Heavy and Sniper were given access to weapon combos that transformed them into formidable tank killers, Spy was given no such treatment. You have better odds of sneaking into Valve HQ and coding in a back hitbox than cutting one down single-handedly. So that's two dimensions of gameplay where Spy can't hang. Needless to say, Spy's ability to perform gets absolutely dumpstered should the wave be composed of these two threats primarily. Begging the obvious question, where does Spy work? Well, as mentioned earlier, he isn't bad at taking down Ubermedics, especially with the tick of the Sapper upgrade. But like we keep needing to come back to, his close range nature is a blight of inconsistency. Depending on the amount of medics, you literally will not have enough time to kill them before the giant squashes you like a bug. Sometimes you'll even be forced to go in without a Sapper due to how lengthy the recharge is amplifying the risk even more. He can get the job done, but a demo, sniper, and pyro will be able to accomplish the same feat without dancing on a wet floor. It's also worth mentioning that Spy is commonly touted as the best for dealing with mid-size robots. Specifically, Fist of Steel Heavies, Bowmen, Super Scouts, and Samurai Demos, as it takes little to no armor pen in order to one-shot them. But realistically, the Heavies don't pose much of a threat, the Crit Bowmen are notably handled better by a Demo Man, and the Scouts and Demo Knights' top-tier mobility is hard to keep pace with if your Sapper isn't online. In the time it takes for the Spy to chase after them, good chance your teammates have already depleted most of their health. Definitely not bad, but nothing to write home about. About. But there is one sector of MVM's gameplay that we haven't yet gone over. The crown jewel of Spy's viability that has cemented his role as a specialist. Spy's giant killing capabilities are off the charts. No other class in the game comes even remotely close to the amount of force he can put out from behind. I wonder how Scout's mom's doing. Spy can close in on nearly 2,000 DPS if properly positioned. An entire sticky trap's worth of damage every second. Mmm, kinda. Maybe. Sorta. Okay, not really. Look, if we strip out all the nuance and just look at pure damage comparisons, Spy is easily the frontrunner in Giant Shredding. But Man vs. Machine isn't played on a spreadsheet. And there are a lot, a lot of factors that go into whether or not it's even feasible for him to achieve his top tier status. With very few exceptions, Spy can't just run behind a robot and start hacking away. After two stabs, the majority of giants will immediately turn their attention onto you. To counteract this, you need to preemptively begin circle strafing in order to grant easy access to the back hitbox. This is non-negotiable. To be even a semi-efficient spy player, you need to get this routine down. Which wouldn't be too hard if there weren't a shitload of tripwires you need to avoid setting off. In fact, let's tackle all of them. 1. Surrounding Robots 
By far the biggest cock block in preventing you from focusing down the giants are the nearby robots not getting off your ass. They'll force you to pull out your dead ringer, putting you into a shitload of downtime. If you're too late on the draw, they'll just kill you outright. If you have enough resistances to not immediately die, the bullet flinch and or projectile knockback will throw off your rhythm. And if all that wasn't enough, they can body block you as well. Yes, if you wait for your AoE classes to kill them off, you'll be able to jump in safely. But that's even more downtime that no other class needs to deal with, and good chance the giant's halfway dead by that point. 2. Map Geometry Pretty simple, if there's an object in the way, it's not like you can strafe through it. You'll either need to cut your stabbing short and move out of range, or wait for the giant to get into a more open position with enough room to get a full rotation. Which, again, is even more downtime. 3. Knockback I've talked a fair bit about how spamming knockback hurts the team far more than it helps, but I've never mentioned just how badly it affects the spy. In fact, he might pay the heaviest toll of any class in the game. You experience all the frailty of being an undisguised spy, but with the meager downside of trashing all of your high-end DPS. And when you couple that with the prior issues, what the fuck are you even there for? 4. Teammate Aggro more specifically, Pyro and Scout. Both of these classes love to dance around robots at close range, and if they happen to run behind a giant as you're getting into position for the kill, best case scenario, you'll need to wait for the robot to start facing your other teammates. Worst case scenario, you die to the residual damage that was pointed in your direction. Not fun. 5. Varying Muscle Memory now this one can be alleviated with practice, but it's still a hurdle to get over. Good chance you'll be working under several different movement speed thresholds depending on the mission's credit pool and whether or not you get those a ratings. The deviation in movement speed will affect swing intervals and the amount of time you should be holding left or right. When one miscalculation can be the difference between a dead spy and a dead giant, that's worth taking into account. 6. Ping Ideally, this would never be on the list, but it's an unfortunate reality of the MVM experience in the modern day. Valve, still, in 2023, has yet to implement the server proximity limiter option over to man vs. machine. This means, depending on the time of day, you'll often find yourself rocking three-digit ping numbers. And for a maneuver that requires relatively strict timing, that added latency can be unbearable. Valve, come on. Can I spell Singapore? No. Can I located on a map? No. Do I know literally anything about the country other than that they kill people who smuggle in uh, weapon reskins? No. So why the fuck are you putting my hairy French ass into these goddamn servers? And speaking of your goddamn servers, Fix them! It's customary for many MVM servers to deal with a subtle lag spike every minute or so. Really, the amount of clips I've had to throw out because this happens has to be in the hundreds at this point. Usually for most classes, these small hiccups don't make a difference. But for Spy, where one misstep can determine life or death, it hurts. It hurts a lot. Now, here's a question. Why the fuck would anyone want to juggle this many torches on top of all of Spy's other shortcomings just to make him efficient in the one area he's not categorically dog shit in? I'm willing to admit that even with all of these problems, Spy still might be the best giant killer, but he requires an extreme amount of extra work when compared to the other classes. Heavy just moves forward and shoots. Soldier just gets on the high ground and shoots. Sniper just aims for the head and shoots. All of this while still being good in the realms of crowd control and tank busting, a feat that Spy will never be able to accomplish. One may argue that the comparison is unfair, as Spy is meant to be a specialist, but giant killing is a shitty bet to put all of your chips in. Everyone can do it. At least the engineer and the scout specialize in areas that can't be replicated. Spy can be fully absent from a team's lineup, and 95% of the time, nothing of value was lost. Now, to be clear, on waves that are almost entirely comprised of mid to giant robots, playing Spy effectively will pay off. Especially on waves where giant uber medics are what define the wave's difficulty. They're the only robots that won't turn to face you upon being undisguised. So you won't need much dexterity to make a strong impact. But in every other situation, Spy is not worth it. 
So, how do we fix that? Well, a lot of MVM spy players genuinely think he doesn't need any buffs. And at the risk of disparaging his player base, I don't agree at all. Spy players are putting in more risk and more effort than anybody. In my opinion, they deserve to be rewarded far more than what they're getting right now. And while I doubt Valve would ever devote resources into buffing a niche class in a niche game mode, we may as well toss some ideas into the hat. Full disclosure, there are probably implications to each of these suggestions that I haven't considered, so feel free to drop your own changes in the comments below. A common recommendation I've seen floating around is to give Spy a money magnet akin to Scout. This would not only crank up Spy's survivability via the extra overheal, but would also give him something to do while the AoE classes wipe out the crowds. Some may call this overkill, but I'm actually a big fan of this idea. The more expedient money collection would give him a ubiquitous specialty, which, unlike his giant killing, would be useful across every single wave. Scout would retain more support tools, greater agility, and better tank busting, but the spy would still have access to the sapper, and his backstab damage would have a much needed decrease in risk. I think this could be an interesting choice to make that would both reward veterans for getting good with him, and make him more forgiving to new players. I've also heard suggestions for an explosive backstab upgrade, and this one I don't like as much. Explosive headshot is already overtuned. The only thing keeping it moderately in check is the skill requirement of continuously landing headshots. Spy doesn't have an issue with landing backstabs. He has an issue with living to tell the tale. But if backstabs were to engulf nearby robots with the same AoE damage as explosive headshot, well, he wouldn't have to worry about not getting out alive because every pack would be killed instantly. This is a massive overcorrection that I don't believe is warranted without heavy number tweaking. Maybe turn the 150 damage AoE to like 40. Then we'll talk. The final solution I could potentially see working would be a Sapper Explode on Ignite-esque upgrade, probably with a Time Bomb theme. Obviously, this would have to be toned down considerably, but it would accomplish two goals. One, give the Spy some rare high moments in the realm of crowd control, and two, make him a much more reliable medic killer, putting him on par with the standard picks we see today. It would differ from the Gas Passer in that while it can't be charged by doing damage, its charge time can be eliminated via ammo refill canteens. So while it wouldn't be anywhere near as spammable, you wouldn't have to worry about using it prematurely and not having one charged when you need it most. A beginner-friendly design that I think would serve him well. So there it is. That's why Spy is a donkey shit class? That is bad. And if you're an MVM Spy main who vehemently disagrees with this video, feel free to write a 2000 word essay in the comments below. I promise you I will read absolutely none of it. As always, I appreciate you all very much. Twitter and Discord are in the description, and that's all I got. See ya.